Chases, chases, chases. We got a whole bunch of chases. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Vader Moz coming to you with another video. Today we're going to talk about what chases I have and some of the little trials and tribulations that I went through to get them. Demi Gorgon from Stranger Things, first chase I ever got. This chase I got from Barnes & Noble. Now, when I got this chase, I didn't know much about Funko Pops or hunting them. I just picked them up occasionally as I saw them and was fine with that. I would pick them up at Walgreens. I had this thing for getting the Walgreens exclusive Spider-Man set. Uh, I never did get the Iron Spider, but that's okay. I'll live. But I did find this guy at Barnes & Noble. The thing is, he wasn't in the wild. I went to Barnes & Noble. I knew that they had chases for Stranger Things. And... I looked on the shelf, it wasn't there, so I went to the customer service desk and looked into getting one ordered, not knowing exactly how it worked. Well, conveniently enough for me, it worked out. They ordered one, shipped to the store, and boom! The reason why I jumped on it, though, thinking that it was going to work, is because in their computer system, when they were looking up the item to order for me, the image showed the chase. So anyway, that's the story on how I got my first chase, the Demigorgon. My second chase, 11 with Egos and Wig. This one, I actually ordered on Amazon because I had a gift card. My wife gives me gift cards every couple weeks because she loves me. And I ordered this 11 with Egos. She was only 20 bucks. I did find another 11 with Egos, which I have since traded away. But I found that one at FYE. So that was pretty nice. So I had two for a while, and I at a pop swap, I traded one away for something else that I wanted, since I already had this one. The next chase I found was Hopper. This one I also found at Barnes & Noble. This one I didn't have to pre-order anything, but I found him sitting on the shelf along with a second one. There was two of them at Barnes & Noble, sitting there side by side. One in a damaged box, which I've gotten rid of that one so far. So. We still have one left though, and this is a great pop to have. I then found some also at Target, and of course no chase left behind, and I picked those up and again traded those away. But I got me one chase of Hopper, which is awesome. The next chase I got was Jack Torrance. Jack, one of my Jacks, I have two, I bought on Amazon again with a gift card because I wasn't finding them, but then shortly thereafter, as it usually works, I found a second one. The second one was during the Target Horror Assortment stocks, but I love my Jack Torrance. He's one of my favorite chases. He's pretty awesome. In fact, the Shining, the whole Shining line is great. And I love my Stephen King's. My next chase, Pennywise with Boat. This one, I, I lost heart on trying to find him. I, I'd started collecting a little hardcore now, and I started searching for chases, and I just seemed to miss him everywhere I went. And then, for a while, Pennywise of Boat Common just wasn't available. I ended up finding this guy at my one of my favorite pop shops here, Steel Collectibles. He was a hundred bucks, but I went ahead and bought him at the time. And of course, what happens after you pay a little bit for a chase that you uh, think you need? You find a second one. This one I found in the Target Horror Assortment. If you'll notice though, I did replace the box, so he's got the blue, no, wait. This one I found in the Target Horror Assortment. This is the one that I had found, I had bought for a hundred bucks. I think I was holding the wrong one earlier. This one is in a different box though. I did a box swap on this one, so he was in a blue eyed box, so I'd have both eye variant boxes, because I'm weird like that. But this one I got in the Target Horror Assortment along with that Jack Torrance I just showed you. And of course, like two weeks after I paid a hundred bucks for one, right? Shortly after the Target Horror Assortments dropped, I had been combing targets for a while because there was one chase that I wanted above all. There was one that I wanted even more than Pennywise. For the longest time, the Pennywise chase, I was just like, eh, I don't need it. But then my OCD took over and said, but you have all the other pops and you need that because you need to have all of them. Thanks, OCD. I needed to lose $100 like I needed to, a hole in my head. But that's, that's besides the point. Anyway, I learned a lot about how Target worked. And I learned a lot about how to get a hold of what I wanted there. Granted, 
I've also learned that I don't want to deal with it anymore if I don't have to. So Faker, I'm not hunting that hard for him. I just pop into Target once in a while. Maybe I'll check other sources, but for now, I'm not hunting that hard for a Faker. I would like one, I would want one, but I don't want to pay a flip price for him. I've learned my lesson. He'll show up. He's a Target exclusive. He's not a chase. Sidetracked. So I learned the system a good bit, and I made some contacts at the time to figure out what and where things were going to show up. And I found out when the Grady Twins were going to drop. They were, they were scheduled to drop on October 5th. In the morning of October 5th, even though the sources on my phone were telling me there's nothing here yet, I get up and I sit in front of Target at 3.30 in the morning because I couldn't sleep. I have insomnia. Whenever I have to get up early in the morning, I can't sleep. So I waited from 3.30 until 8 o'clock. Around 4 in the morning, a local PD officer pulled up where I was camped out at. You know, I was just in a lawn chair, had a big warm coat on because it was cold. And he starts grilling me as to why I'm there. At first it seems pleasant, like, hey, why are you here? And I, I tell him, you know, as asinine as it sounds, I'm camping out for a toy. You know, and I got drinks and a lawn chair and I'm in a jacket. I got earbuds on because I'm listening to a book. And two more PD pull up and they decide to violate my rights, ask if they can frisk me, check me out to make sure I'm all on the level. And I thought about it for a minute. I understood that since I wasn't under arrest that legally they couldn't do that. But then I didn't want to end up being one of those people you see filmed getting hauled into a police car because I didn't just want to comply. And really that's probably what they expect and I probably shouldn't have given them the permission to do that but I had nothing to hide and I just wanted my bloody toy. I get frisked. Cops go leave me alone saying that if they hear of any problems they're gonna come get me. Because, you know, Troublemaker, camping in my lawn chair for a toy in front of a store, like they've never heard of that. Around quarter to eight, the next group of people looking for the Grady Twin Chases show up. Because now it is in the system. Now they are able to see it on their devices. And, you know, the first people that came up, you know, we, we, we were amicable. We, we chatted. We had fun. But, you know, I knew that there was a one in three chance that there was a chase in the box. Because they only got a case of three, just like all other targets. And the chase chance was 1 in 36. So I had very low odds. Another couple of people show up and one of them just looks like, you know, he, he's there for the chase. He doesn't look like he collects pops now. And that's just me reading, you know, the book by its cover. He didn't look happy that there was a line. I tried to tell him because we had already had three people. I was like, you know, they only got a case of three. If you want your to try your luck somewhere else. But, you know, he didn't. And the lady pops her head out asking what we're all waiting for, and I told her, Really? So by that point, this lady that works there pops her head out from the store asking what we're all waiting for, and I explain to her what we're waiting for, and she goes to respond by saying that they won't have it out in the morning, they're going to push it out throughout the day. And I looked at her, a lot of my patience was lost by that point, it was freezing that night, I couldn't feel most of my extremities. I couldn't stop shaking. Even though I was dressed warmly, I had thermals on, a huge coat, everything. And I looked at her and I said, I was told that they would be available at 8 this morning. And I was, the night before, told by an employee that they would be on the floor by 8 in the morning. And so I expect them to be on the floor this morning. Not waiting throughout the day. I've been here since 3.30 in the morning. I have to work this afternoon. And I did. I had to be at work at 3 in the afternoon. And I just want you to find this toy. She looks at me like I've grown four heads and that I'm just daft for even suggesting that she provide proper customer service. Because, yes, I was told that the product would be there in the morning, not throughout the day. And I was told that they did have it. In any case, they let us in the store. And, of course, the product's not on the floor. And so we asked the first associate we see, and at this point I'm concerned because even though I was first in line, it's now turned into this weird cluster, try not to use profanity, but you know what I mean. Because there's five or six people there, all wanting one of three products, and one in particular. Now there's no kind of line or system to help tally this up. In any case, they apparently knew that this product was going to be some kind of issue. We find an associate. The associate goes in the back and pulls out a case of three. She's also with some kind of 
uh, loss prevention personnel or somebody at least to back that person up. The guy comes out and he knows that I'm, I was there first and he goes to hand me the first one he grabs. And I said, excuse me, I've been here since 3.30. I would like the opportunity to see which product I would like to buy and not just be handed one. That's probably nicer than I said it because at this point I was just done. He acquiesces and I see the chase sitting in the box. And as I, we've already established that I get first dibs on whatever's in there, because he prefers the box to me so I could look. And I see the chase and I go to reach for it and the threat assessment guy throws a fit that I'm reaching for a product that's still in his associate's hand, even though it was held out to me as if I could look through it. The guy takes the chase away from me, the threat assessment guy. And I'm just starting to stare dumbfounded like, is this guy really gonna me? At this point, I'm trying to figure out what I can do while this guy's lecturing me on don't touch things and blah 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 and you can't do that. And I'm just nodding and trying to smile and be understanding as well in the back of my head thinking how I could just kill this guy and leave him in an alley because I would put up with way too much for this thing. And so he gets done lecturing me and he's like, I'm going to let you buy it. Well, thank you. In any case, we'll cut the story short from here on out. I buy it, I leave with this, I only buy the one, even though I was first and I could technically have bought all that I was there for, because I was there for at least three. Since there was other people, I didn't want to be that guy trying to buy the whole case. I picked up my chase, and then I headed over to the next target, which was 30 miles away, and on the way, because I knew they had them there, I'd, I'd spoken with an associate, said they, were ha they had them there, they couldn't hold them, but I only needed two commons, I didn't need another chase. I had my chase. Uh, I wouldn't have, you know, said no to another chase because I had people that wanted another chase that I knew, but I didn't need another chase. And so, but I still sped over there. I got pulled over. <laughs> this is my luck this morning. I got pulled over on my way to the other target. I mean, it was a big open road. You know, the speed limit on that road is 55. I was going 65. Not a lot of lights or anything. But anyway, the guy pulled me over because I was going 65. Or actually, it was a lady. She pulled me over. Do you know how fast you're going? I, I was honest. I was like, I know I was speeding. And she's like, why? And I was like, because I'm trying to get to a store and pick up a toy. This is a very limited toy. And I'm trying to get it. And I know they have it. And I'm just racing over there. I know it's not acceptable. She does the cop thing and just kind of wanders off to go process and everything. She comes back. I'm gonna let you off with a warning this time. Oh, thank God. So, I got off lucky there. But I got there and they had two more Grady Twins on the shelf and I then, of course, bought three. One common for me, one chase for me, and the other common I sent to my buddy in Ohio. The next chase I got was Tiffany. She I just got a Funko Pop swap. No real interesting story there. I traded a common Pennywise for because I had an extra. You know how Bearded Pop Hunter has no chase left behind? And I'm sure he's not the only one that does that, but he's the one that I most consistently watch that does that. My theory was no Pennywise left behind. Let's move on to the next chase. The next chase I got, I found retail. I was pretty happy about it. Freddy Krueger, chase. He's not as expensive as he once was. Once you look on PPG, he's gone down quite a bit, which is kind of sad. But for $10 on my part, I found him in a store. On the same day, Elvira Chase. I was standing over there talking to my buddy who worked at the Hot Topic. I was holding a regular Elvira in my hand going, should I get her? I was really trying to limit myself and what I was buying. As I was contemplating, UPS shows up with their shipment of toys. Right before Hot Topic changed the way they received Funko Pops and put them out. Me and the, my, my buddy, we look down at, you know, at the boxes and the boxes say Elvira with Chase. This is pretty much a done deal for me at this point. I was like, well, if I pick up the Chase, I'll buy the Common and I'll I'll buy all this. There's no more hesitancy, I'll buy it. I got lucky, she was a restock. Got the Hellboy Chase with another Amazon gift card from my wife. My next Chase was Sapper. This guy I paid flip for. I bought him for my buddy over in Stuck in Time and he was 18 bucks. But I needed him because I was collecting the Blade Runner wave at that point. And I got this guy. This guy was a present from my buddy that I sent uh, the Grady Twins to. He had found this guy sitting in a shop and he asked me if I wanted it. And I said, you know, I don't collect Dorb. The hell if I need something else, right? But if you want to send it to me, I'm not going to say no. Because you're looking out and I appreciate that. So he picked me up the Jack Torrance Chase from The Shining. The most recent 
find that I found in the wild. I found it using my little trick that I use. I follow Reddit for the Funko Pop subreddit. The good thing about that is you can see when a pop lands on the West Coast. Since I live on the East Coast, this is helpful because the pops seem to go, specifically with Hot Topic, the pops seem to go from West Coast to East Coast. They'll land on the West Coast and about four or so days later, you start seeing them on the East Coast. So you'll see the pop on Reddit landing on the West Coast on like a Wednesday. And then you'll see the pop actually show up on your local Hot Topic social media, typically, in my experience, Wednesday night or even Thursday night. Yizma. Now, Hot Topic won't post chases or even figures that have a chase on their social media anymore. So you have to look outside what they actually post for you. In my case, on their social media, they had posted a picture of Paka from Emperor's New Groove. But off to the side, you can see a little hint of Yzma. They had three Yzmas on the shelf. None of them were chases. She's like, well, let me check in the back. Goes back there and pulls out five to six more cases of Yzma. As we're looking through them, somebody else comes in. Wanting an Yzma chase, of course. The last box we open had one Yzma chase. So out of five or six cases, even though all, all those cases said with chase on them, but they are one and three, uh, so that wouldn't be right. It's a one and six variant. They only had one. Yzma chase. Hot Topic got in Xander, but got no chases of Xander. And I had remembered seeing a Xander over at my buddy's shop stuck in time. So I just went over there and was like, you know what? I, I drive a gas guzzler and let's just put it into it because I'm going to spend more money. And Xander, and Xander was only 20 some odd bucks. So I picked up Xander from stuck in time. My last chase I got this past, I think this past weekend, and it wasn't something I was setting out to buy. It was something I wanted, but it wasn't something that I set out to buy. I was all depressed because I had planned previously to get a Sig Haig Captain Spaulding Pop and get him to sign it when he was at Days of the Dead. So that, that should date it for you here in Atlanta. And it turned out that Sig Haig canceled, and it turned out that there was no Captain Spaulding Pops anywhere available at the convention, which I was really hoping there would be. And I'd already passed up a Leatherface chase earlier that week. So when I went into my buddy's shop at Steel Collectibles and saw Michael Myers on the shelf, I had to buy him. I paid about PPG for him, but I had to have him. This is just one less horror chase that I don't have to track down. Any case, that's what I have for you today. I want to give a shout out to my Alliance brothers. Without them, I wouldn't even have this channel really going. I want to give a shout out to the Bearded Pop Hunter. Jetta Patrol, Papa Funk, Chasing Rob, P-Town Pop Hunter, Top Pops, pretty much anybody that I've ever watched on YouTube doing pop hunts, pop videos, Rock, I don't want to forget you, I'm, I'm sure I'm not going to remember everybody, I should have wrote a list, <laughs> Steve Collects, see I, I could do this all day, but I want to give a huge shout out to all you guys that inspired me to do this, and I really appreciate all the supports that I've gotten from you. Jetta Patrol, Beard Pop Hunter, I got some things coming for you. Anyway guys, please like and subscribe to my channel. We will be giving away three Funko Pops when I hit 200 subscribers. We have an NES GameStop exclusive Jason Voorhees, a Comic Craze exclusive Glow in the Dark She-Hulk, and an FYE exclusive Trap Jaw, one of which you could win with my 200 subscriber giveaway. All you need to do is subscribe, so please hit the like button, please hit subscribe, and of course, mash that notification button. That way you'll know when I'm actually giving these away. But thank you again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my video.